Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com and today I thought the topic of my video would be on zooming, panning, and rotating inside of Fusion 360. And I think this will be a beneficial video uh, whether you're just starting out with Fusion 360 or you've been using it for a while. I think I'm going to show you a couple things that maybe you didn't know or get you started uh, if, if you're just learning. I have a fairly simple model up on the screen that we're going to use as an example to see the different uh, zooming, panning, rotating techniques I want to show. But the first thing I wanted to do was go up to my name under my preferences and let's look at how things are set up. So I went and reset Fusion, so this should be the way that it comes to you uh, out of the box. So I went and changed all my defaults. The thing I want you to pay attention to is I'm currently using Fusion in Constrained Orbit. We're going to... Um, this video pertains to using the fusion setting here. If you're using say Alias or SolidWorks, it's gonna be a little different. Uh, the inventor setting should be very, very similar uh, to what I'm gonna show, so you'd be okay if you see that. Uh, if you need to change your settings back, remember to hit okay. I don't need to change mine, so I'm gonna cancel because they're already set, and we're gonna take a look at this model. So what I wanna talk about first is we're gonna talk about the navigation menu down here across the bottom. Uh, the first command we're going to talk about is the look at command. The look at command lets you click on that and then click on any flat surface and rotate that surface to be perpendicular to your eyes or normal to is what that's often referred to in CAD programs or parallel to your screen. So I have an example of that on this model. I'm going to go ahead and click on the look at command and I'm going to click on that face right there. Now it's going to rotate the model so that we're looking directly perpendicular to that surface. If I do that again one more time, and click on that surface, you'll see how it rotates the model. So now we're perpendicular to looking at that particular surface. Again, in the CAD world, oftentimes that's referred to as normal to. Let's go ahead and uh, click on the front view over here. We'll talk about the view cube coming up. Uh, next thing I wanna talk about is the pan command. So if we start the pan command, our little mouse turns into a hand. What we do is left click and hold. And if I move the mouse to the right, the model goes to the right. If I move the mouse to the left, up or down, you can pan the model around on your screen and refit it. The next one's going to be zoom in and zoom out. If I click on that and left click and hold and I pull the mouse towards me, the, mouse, the model zooms in. And if I push the mouse away from me, the model zooms out. So we can roll it in or roll it out and change the size of the model. Uh, I often use this command when I want to get a precise screenshot of a model because it's an infinite level of zoom. I can roll it anywhere that I want to. And later on, when I show how I can zoom in and out with the mouse, you'll see that there's an incremental move that uh, doesn't offer quite as much control. The next two are the zoom window and zoom to fit. If I choose zoom window, I simply drag a rectangular window around my screen and now the model will zoom to that particular area. If I want to see the entire model, I can hit the drop down and choose fit, or you'll also notice that it's F6 on your keyboard. And when I do that, it zooms the model out so that it fully fits inside of the drawing window. I'm going to talk about some better ways to use these three commands. Um, some things I don't like about this is when I start it, there's no way to end it except to right click and say cancel or OK, or hit the escape key to get back out of it. So that requires an extra action for you to do. Okay, so um, we'll go up and talk about the view cube a little bit here. The view cube is a pretty handy thing. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the home button to go home. You'll notice that there's different faces of the view cube and they're labeled and we have vertices and edges. And depending on what you select on, your model is gonna be, rotate to a different uh, area. So if I were to click on the front view, it rotates to the front. If I were to click on one of the vertices of the corner, it rotates to an isometric view. I can keep working my way around the model that way until I get back to my home view again. If I click on an edge, it rotates to that view. If I click on an edge that way, it rotates that view. So you can see the view cube has a lot of different methods for you to click on different faces. When I'm in an orthographic view on the model, I also get two arrows here. If I click on one of the arrows, it rotates me by 90. Uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. And you'll also notice that these these arrows here that will rotate you to the by 90 degrees to the next face of the view cube. So here I'm looking at the front. If I want to look at the top, I can click on that arrow and it'll rotate me around. Uh, go ahead and click on the home button. Whenever you get lost, go ahead and hit home and it'll get you back to a default isometric view. 
Another handy tip that you can do with the view cube is if you left click and hold on it, you can rotate your model around. So without starting any kind of rotation command or anything like that, just left click and hold the view cube and now you can pan your model around, or I should say rotate your model around. So let's come back down here for a minute and let's talk about two of the orbit commands. So there's constrained orbit and there's free orbit. By default, for uh, out of the box, constrained orbit is the choice that uh, they give you. And the idea is, uh, thinking that you're a new user, that they try to constrain the rotation of the model to one axis at a time. So that tries to help uh, not make it rotate around so freely. I'm of the opinion that I like the free orbit, and I think it's that's an easier command to use. Uh, we're gonna let me let me shut off the layout grid just to get rid of that, and we're gonna look at the different rotation options under free orbit and learn some more about that. The other thing I want to do to make this easier to see is under display settings for environment, I'm going to go to dark sky so we get a nice gray background on there. And I'm going to click on the front view. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the free orbit command. And when I do, you can faintly make out a crosshair, so a circle with four tick marks on each quadrant. And you'll notice that my mouse does different things depending on where I place it. When I'm inside of the circle, my mouse cursor looks like a like a globe kind of. When I put my mouse on the circle, it turns flat. Or if I put it over one of these different tick marks, you can see it turns in kind of a, a flat view. If I go back on the outside again, a little harder to see there, but then we're at that six degrees or we're at the globe view. So what this means is you also notice that there's a, I should point this out, there's a center crosshair as well. This is where the center rotation is going to be. So when I rotate this around, no matter where I let it go, the center rotation is always going to be in the, in the center of the part. Um, if I wanted to change that rotation, maybe I wanted to rotate more about right there. So I just move my mouse to that area and left click, and now it'll recenter the model based on where that point is. And if I rotate this around, just kind of be a little crazy with it for a second, and I let go, notice how that that point stays locked to the center of rotation on the model. So that, that can be a nice little feature when you're trying to rotate a model precisely about a point. I'm going to click on the front view again. Click on home and then front, try and get this oriented back in the way. Okay, so if I put my mouse on this circle and I left click and hold, you'll notice that all I can do is go counterclockwise or cl clockwise with it. No matter where I move my mouse or how I move it, those are the only two axes that I'm allowed to move on. So let's go ahead and click on the front, get this re-squared up. If I move my mouse over one of these tick marks on the top or the bottom, when I move my mouse, the only thing it'll do is it'll rotate the model towards me or away from me, but it doesn't matter how else I move my model, it will only, it'll only tumble the model forwards or backwards. Click on front again. Same, if I put my mouse over one of these tick marks, if I go left or right, it locks the dominant axis to that tick mark that I'm on, so it doesn't really matter where I move my mouse. The only thing we're going to be able to do is rotate the model left or right. Let's go click on the front view again. Now one thing, uh, one of the reasons I don't like this command again is I have to right click and say cancel or OK, or else hit the escape key on my keyboard to get out of it. There is one more little known way to get out of the, out of the, uh, the orbit command, I should say. If I take my mouse, as I start to move farther and farther away, eventually I will see that symbol right there. If I left click, that cancels the command. So that's another way we can get out of the command. My favorite ways to zoom and pan and rotate around in a model are by using the middle mouse button, the roller button on your mouse. So if I want to pan, I'm simply going to hold it down and move it left, move the mouse left or right or up or down, and that'll pan the model around. If I want to zoom in or zoom out, I'm going to roll the mouse towards me to zoom in, and I'm going to roll the mouse away from me to zoom out. So those are two ways that I like to zoom in and zoom out. And remember the fit command, the F6 that we were talking about? If you quickly double click the middle mouse button, so depress it twice, it will also fit the model. So uh, the majority of the times, those three things are all that I need for rotating, using the mouse to roll in and out, using the pan to go in and out, in and out. And uh, the final one that I'd like to show you is to be able to rotate without starting a command, you can hold the shift button down and push the middle mouse button and you can also rotate your model. So now when I let go, 
I'm out of the command. I don't have to hit escape or cancel or okay or anything like that. It just instantly ends. So hopefully, um, hopefully I covered some things that you haven't known before and you feel a lot more comfortable navigating around inside of your fusion models. Thanks for watching.